When you get done watching this episode, you're going to want a cup of coffee. Coffee is a morning ritual. Some people like tea, but coffee seems to reign supreme. It becomes a moment of solace when you're driving to work in the morning. It's a poetic embrace that comforts and invigorates, whispering promises of a new day with every drop. I can't say enough about Cleona Coffee Roasters, and this is coming from a tea guy. I had a few cups, and I have to say, it's probably one of the best coffees I've had. You didn't have to put much in it. It was already good. I see Matt's cleverly branded bag across the table from me, and I actually have to make a decision whether or not I want tea or coffee in the morning, and that's new for me. So I hope you enjoy this episode as much as I've enjoyed the coffee. Not only is this good coffee, but it's a veteran-owned and operated business. We're talking to Cleona Coffee Roasters. Shots from the Winchester Podcast presents Shots on the Go, brought to you by Greencastle Consulting, your nation's premier strategy execution firm. On this season of Shots on the Go, we're exploring veteran-owned and operated businesses who are vendors at the upcoming annual VetFest put on by Greencastle Consulting in Malvern, Pennsylvania in September. VetFest highlights some of the area's most outstanding veteran-owned and operated businesses. Let's let Matt tell us all about Cleona Coffee Roasters. All right, my name is Matt Zeckman. I'm the owner and founder of Cleona Coffee Roasters. Uh, we're located in Anvil, Pennsylvania. Um, and right uh, out front here, we're at the coffee shop. Uh, so I'll show you that part. Okay. And um, we opened this in October, uh, kind of not really by my intention. Um, when I moved into this building for the roastery, which you'll see later, um, we ended up having the space here and the owner wanted a coffee shop. So um, very quickly, we were building the counters and then the ball was sort of in my court. So um, very small scale, as you can see, we have some espresso equipment and we do drip coffee. We have three different drip coffees um, at a time, a light, medium and dark roast. We do different energy drinks, um, although most of it is coffee based. Um, we do a little bit of other things as well. Um, we get tea from a veteran known coffee or sorry, a veteran known tea business, the Skirted Soldier. Um, she's out of Blue Knob PA. I mean, I work with her a lot and refer her to a lot of other businesses. Um, and then over in this section, you can see I have lots of collaboration products from um, not only do I have all of my coffee starting with light roast going up the roast level um, and ground and beans, but I also have a lot of collaboration products with other businesses. So the tea that I just mentioned, we do make K-cups. Uh, we have different soaps here that have my coffee in it. There's a sugar scrub. These two hats were made by the Modern Gen Hat Company. Um, most notably, I have the new Chinook hat. Um, this is a Chinook sling loading my logo. Um, this is after the Nomads blend, which is over there in the black bag. Nice. You can sort of see that. So we sort of did a themed uh, hat and I like that idea. So we're probably going to do it more. And then up at the top, we have lip balm that has my coffee in it. Um, we partnered with veteran owned candle company, Bearmont Candles. We do nice. wax melts. We have our own scent and then we have some of his other lineups. Um, so yeah, lots of different products, some that I didn't even mention, but we have a lot going on here. I mean, a lot of people like it because it's pretty much coffee focused and we like to include other businesses into our business as much as possible. That's cool, man. Like, and so uh, you're uh, U.S. military, still in the uh, army. Yep, still, still in, the, in army? the army. Yep, yeah. I'm in the PA Army National Guard. I'm in the Medical Readiness Detachment. Um, I'm a healthcare NCO. That's my technical title, but combat medic. And uh, yeah, I did. I enlisted um, 2017. It's hard to believe it was that long ago, <laughs> um, but I enjoyed it so much, and I re-enlisted for another six years, and I plan on doing at least 20 and retiring. That's but. amazing. So the big question. Why coffee? Well, there's a lot to it. So in, uh, when I first graduated high school in 2016, I started working on an ambulance full time. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you can imagine, when you're on ambulance, you pretty much don't have time to be back at your station. So we ended up going to Dunkin' a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so we ended up buying coffee and that's sort of what got me into it. Uh, my coworker was really into it. And then I started to buy it and it got me into it. So. As time went on, then I ended up buying um, more and more and then spending more and more money. So I started brewing it at home. Uh, and, and as time went on, I just started really getting into that and brewing it at home and learning a little bit more about coffee. Um, and at the time, my, my perspective of what coffee was was definitely very different. Mm -hmm. um, even to that moment, I didn't really have true, really good coffee um, and I didn't know it yet. Um, so I was big into other brands like Black Rifle, um, and you know, I still really like what they do. They do a lot of donations, they have really good gear, um, but I was really into them at the time. 
And uh, kind of when you join the army, every unit has that one person that's like a little too much into coffee. Well, that that was me. <laughs> uh, so I would end up brewing it all the time when I'd go on like small sets of orders or whatever. Um, and then 2019, I deployed. And at first we were doing missions constantly and we had no free time whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, and then very quickly, the peace treaty was signed in Afghanistan, COVID hit. Uh, so we had no free time to all the free time. Yeah. Um, so me and another door gunner, Spears, uh, made a little coffee shop. We called it the Gunner's Lounge Cafe. Nice. Um, and we didn't charge people at all. We just did it for fun. And we had a little menu and people would come here from other units and we would just brew them coffee. And uh, that's really what got my attention to it even faster. Because now I didn't have to worry about anything else but coffee pretty much. So yeah. for months I watched YouTube videos, I read books listen to podcasts, different things like that. And um, really became a nerd. I think my friends hated me. That's all I would talk about. <laughs> um, but really in that time, I just learned as much as I possibly could about it. And it's then- mostly self-taught. It's all self-taught, yeah. yeah. That's really cool. And then when I came home, I bought a house um, and bought myself a really nice espresso machine, actually very similar to the one we have in the coffee shop here. Uh, and as time went on then, uh, there's a room in the back of my house and uh, roasting in general from brewing is extremely different. It's very few things kind of cross over from the brewing side to the roasting side. So I didn't want to start. Um, well, then I started and then I just thought it was interesting <laughs> yeah. and I just wanted to sample around with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, really it just kind of, I started, I bought this half, uh, half pound hot air roaster. Mm -hmm. I started making enough for myself. Is that what's in the back here? No, that's, no. A, that's, that's too small. It's sitting it in my house small. in a box somewhere. Oh, maybe. gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I still use that for samples here and there when I have really small samples that I have to try. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so started making a little too much for myself and I was giving it away. Mm. And then my family and my friends were giving it to people and then they were ordering from me. Yeah. And then the orders just didn't stop and they kept getting bigger and bigger. I decided at that point I should make it a business. I should make it legal, but mm -hmm. strictly just for the sake of making it legal. Didn't yeah. want to do this full time. Didn't want it to be what it is now. Mm -hmm. um, and then before so I was reluctant. This is reluctant. I had no <laughs> intentions of starting a business. When we were overseas, a lot of people had a lot of business plans mm -hmm. and uh, they'd ask me like, are you gonna open a coffee business when you get home? And I was like, no, no, definitely not. <laughs> Maybe in like 10 years, I just didn't seem, I wanted to go to nursing school. Like that was kind of my plan. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And yeah, so the, the orders just kept coming. I ended up doing this out of my house. I got a food license, everything was good. And then I launched my online website, started getting orders different retail locations started to sell it and then it just kept growing and then last year in June I got to the point where I physically couldn't do that and work on the ambulance so wow. I made the jump to do it full-time and that was shortly after I moved into this building nice so. and this building is uh, partly uh, let's move around here a gun range yeah that's right so mm -hmm. the the owner Mark Soliday um, mm -hmm. of 911 Rapid Response is kind of the parent company and then below it is Homeland Outfitters and they have market graphics just box it, mm -hmm. um, Vengeant Apparatus. So many different sub companies below that. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I started selling my coffee in this store here. Yeah. And uh, Mark asked me, he's like, do you need space? And uh, I did need space. So I started to look at it like I'm outgrowing my house. I yeah. can't do this here. There's ordinances that I was following, but mm -hmm. I was kind of pushing it pretty hard and my neighbors didn't like me. So, <laughs> um, so it came to the point I needed space. He had it mm -hmm. and you know, it seemed like a crazy thought at first. And then before we knew it, um, he moved his graphics department up here. They built the wall up here and then back there, they built a wall for me. So that's amazing. So like not even intentionally no. that's this come, come about in your life. You just, it just happened. It just happened. You know, and, um, as some people, as a reluctant entrepreneur, you know, <laughs> you, you, you start to, um, you start to believe in yourself, you know, at mm -hmm. what point did you start to recognize that in yourself as that? I can do this. Um, I think there's still some days. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's definitely days when I still think like, mm -hmm. you know, the business isn't going to, you know, it's, yeah. it's still small. Like it's not going to grow. Like, mm -hmm. you know, there's still things you just, you know, you got to humble yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think probably as I started getting new retail locations. So mm -hmm. currently I'm in 28 different stores. Oh, now wow. don't get me wrong. Some are very small, but some are much larger. Yeah. Um, so as I started That's going impressive. to more stores, um, and people started buying it. And just the fact that people were seeking me out, I mm -hmm. think I started to realize, okay, 
maybe I have something, but mm -hmm. at the same time, I was like, I don't want it to be something. I want it to <laughs> do small scale. I had my yeah. thoughts on what I wanted to do in life and mm -hmm. that's what I was going to do. And when I made the jump to do it full time, it was a kind of a big decision because yeah. I did EMS at that point for seven years full time. Mm. So doing that jump and now being fully reliant on my business for my income. Yeah. This is a big jump and you know frankly and that's one of those you have to have the potential and realize like it's going to keep growing to sustain yeah. it and uh yeah honestly i couldn't believe how fast things <laughs> took off and it, it was one of those i either grow with the business mm -hmm. or i think about that potential it could have had and i just yeah keep it small so that's great that's great that you're making the the effort for it and that you yeah. are um you're pushing new products too when we, when i walked in you mentioned about um working with weddings Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so there's um, really there's there's kind of different ways, and this is where kind of to jump back a little bit mm -hmm. because I didn't plan on doing this as a business because yeah. this was just something that turned into one. Um, I feel like a lot of people that have a business plan, like they want to do something, they're good at it, or maybe they just want to make money, but they have all the time in the world to think this out, get mm -hmm. all their ducks in a row, pretty much. Mm -hmm. That wasn't me. That was me grabbing ducks and throwing them in front of me to get them in a row because I needed them done. Yeah. Um, so there's still things now, like, don't get me wrong, the office stuff that I, the business owner stuff is what I hate. The finances, you know, all the IRS stuff, just hate it, the bookkeeping. Um, That's pretty so, round the board. A lot of people don't like that. Right, so and yeah. that was honestly the biggest culture shock. When I was doing this part-time, mm -hmm. it was still just something I did for fun. That yeah. was, I didn't need to do a lot of this stuff or be serious with it because this was just fun mm -hmm. and it still is fun. But um, yeah, so now going forward, um, I have to start thinking like a business owner, right? Mm -hmm. Now this is my income and I, I truly do want to see how big the business can get. Yeah. Um, and that's where I started reading business books and the, the concept of finding the blue ocean of business is just, to me, that's what I like doing and I've mm -hmm. always been different. Yeah. I've always been different than other people. I've always, um, you know, had interests and just, I like being myself and sometimes that is a struggle. Mm -hmm. um, frankly, but same thing with my business. I want it to be its own thing. I don't want to copy anyone. Yeah. I want to be my own thing that people seek out because I'm unique. Yeah. And part of that is I love customization. Um, in high school, I learned how to use Photoshop. And mm -hmm. honestly, that is a skill that has followed me thus far and mm -hmm. I've just gotten better at it. So yeah. I have a co uh, color label printer. I get yeah. full colored pictures. Mm -hmm. um, so I could do any design um, that I design in my office, so it cost me nothing to make it other than my time. Yeah, let's um, do one of these. Uh, this is kind of like one of your designs. Yeah, here, that's right? one of my yeah my basic designs. This is like my standard bag, which I am going to be changing here soon. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of my normal design. Nice. And then I'll switch it to uh, one of the the blends. We actually have like one or two bags left, but this is called the Speakeasy. Oh, nice. This was a partnership blend I did with Modern Gent Hat Company and Bungalow 717 Cigars. That's fun. So I designed that myself. And then kind of one of the cool ones is Crazy Eights. Um, this is one of my regular offerings as well, but 10% oh, of the proceeds get donated to the Anvil Cleona Fire Department. That's amazing. And uh, as you can see, full color pictures, just yeah. really whatever design I want. And because of that, I can take that and I can do special events. I can design something, it costs me nothing, and it costs me no extra to print any design on the label. Mm -hmm. um, so I can do all the way down to 36 gram sample packs now, um, all the way up to five pound bags, 10 pound bags, and That's everything awesome. in between. Um, so really doing customization, private labeling. Um, I will not run a private labeled coffee business, if yeah. that makes sense, where mm -hmm. if someone approaches me, they want to exclusively basically run a website and mm -hmm. I would do drop shipping and label my coffee as someone else's brand. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but what I will do is other businesses or businesses that I already wholesale for mm -hmm. um, that are brewing my coffee, I'll do a label for them. Um, so doing that for weddings, baby showers, businesses, you know, business mail outs. I did one a few weeks ago for 40 different bags of coffee, privately labeled, going to different addresses. Nice. I do that. Um, so really just making coffee something that everyone can enjoy and something yeah. that you can tailor to your business. Um, so I love that part of it. Nice. Um, and you can see it in the parking lot, maybe. I have the trailer out there in the corner. Ah, uh, yes, I can see it out there. That is Ristretto, the mobile roastery. Um, oh, that's really cool. Uh, that is the newest release and the most exciting um, new venture with the business. Nice. Um, I'm the only mobile roastery in Pennsylvania. Oh, really? Oh, that's, so, that's, that's really cool. 
So the business that, or the uh, the roaster that really got my business started, mm -hmm. um, I named it Legacy. Um, that roaster only does three pounds at a time. That's mm -hmm. the one in the trailer. Nice. So now I can go to events and roast on site. Mm -hmm. It's also licensed to brew. So oh, I wow. can roast, grind, brew, package, whatever, distribute all out of that trailer. That's really fun. And bring that experience to other people. Yeah. Oh, that's really so. cool. Speaking of roasters, you said there was something in the back here. Yep. Yeah, let's go take a look at that. Let's check that out. We'll be right back after this. We created VetFest as a way to bring together not only veteran organizations that have food or vendors, but also the service organizations that serve the veteran community, as well as people that just are uh, veteran supporters. This is our first year at VetFest. We jumped at the opportunity. We love supporting veterans. I'm a veteran. There are so many vendors, uh, participants, veterans. I had no idea just how big it is. There are so many vendors out here, so much fun. I'm loving the live music. So today we have some of our tadpole obstacles set up. Uh, that's our kids course. We brought out everything from walls to carries, crawls. We have a rope swing. Great to be at Vet Fest. I'm a veteran myself of the United States Navy. This is Team Foster's second time at Vet Fest. Super excited to be out here. Lots of amazing vendors, great energy, fantastic people. This year, the thing that I enjoy the most is just to, to see the success of all the different vendors and the excitement that they're having about being here, potentially be coming back next year and, and even adding to this, uh, adding more vendors and adding more veteran-owned organizations that can just you know raise the awareness of what uh, veterans are capable of. Now back to Shots on the Go. Um, when my coffee shop closes at one o'clock, the building mm -hmm. here is still open till about five, and then yeah. on uh, Fridays and Saturdays, they're open till eight. Um, That's cool. So they still have a shelf with my coffee on that they can sell. So yeah. even if my coffee shop's not open, people can still come in here and buy it. That's cool. Um, but this was the this was open. This was mm -hmm. the graphics department. Yeah. And then they built this wall for me so this oh, is kind of my space i got my office and then i got my roastery if no one's ever seen it before this is what coffee comes in when i buy it oh wow um, they're these 69 kilo burlap bags um wow like i said it's kind of a mess um mondays and fridays are my office days and then tuesday wednesday thursday is when i typically do all of the work so yeah not the cleanest as it was however this is the roastery so wow this is awesome it smells great in here it does smell good. Everybody yeah. here loves that, uh, loves it for that part. They that walk aroma. in the hallway yeah. and it smells the whole thing up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so Tuesdays are my roast days. This is, I named it Apollo. It seems like I name everything, but <laughs> this is Apollo. This is a 2023 Mill City six kilo roaster. So I got wow. this new okay. um, and this was really one of those okay, I got to be serious about my business types of jumps. Yeah. You get a loan and buy something that's $28,000. Absolutely. I mean, and this room is filtered. You got the air that goes out or in here. Like that's, mm. that's amazing. That's a lot of, that's a lot of work. Right. <laughs> and that was put into a lot of effort put into this. So I had a, a blank room and I had to pretty much get everything done. And yeah. so right there was the ducting. I did have the small roaster in here, but yeah. now that's gone and that's in the trailer. So mm -hmm. that's just kind of covered up now. But otherwise, yeah. So I roast on Tuesdays. So yesterday I did about 280 pounds. Nice. Um, this roaster does about 10 pounds per batch. So um, some batches are less than a full six kilo batch. So I think in total I did about 30. Through 30 batches. Yeah. My roast log, everything that I roast goes on here. Oh, nice. Um, and then everything that I do, every batch that I do, there's, um, oh, my computer's off, but basically it saves it in here. And there's graphical data that I'm looking at while I'm roasting. And that's something that I kind of also specialize in, although mm -hmm. it's not a new concept if you look across the country mm -hmm. in this area you really don't have a roaster that's doing what i'm doing with the science and the data to make sure everything's precise making yeah, sure yeah. um really predicting where the coffee's going and how i want to turn that coffee into being 
what I want it to be, how I want it to taste, mm -hmm. um, how I want the customer to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, and then likewise, um, that's with a new coffee and then you have to replicate it. You have to make sure if you did something good, you have to do the same thing over again. Mm -hmm. um, that's where people think I'm too nerdy because if <laughs> you see me brewing coffee out front, I'm breaking out a scale and I'm mm -hmm. doing everything to a gram. Yeah. Um, but consistency matters and at the end of the day, if you know what's good, why would you want to change it? So There's coffee um, competitions out there. I've uh, mm -hmm. watched something on Netflix where there was a um, a specific brew kind of coffee. Like you, you would be that guy to be on that contest. <laughs> I would, and actually, there's a there's the World Barista Championship. There's mm. the U.S. Barista Championship. Um, but the one that I really wanted to compete in is the World Aeropress Championship. Aeropress, nice. So the Aeropress. Um, I was actually on another podcast, uh, American Grown Podcast, out of Lebanon, and nice. one of the things I showed was the original AeroPress that I bought in 2016. Mm. Um, and that AeroPress I took on my deployment with me, I probably brewed over a thousand cups of coffee on it. Nice. Um, but cylindrical plastic, there's two pieces and basically it's it's a weird, it's a mixed phase brewer. So it's mm. kind of like a pour over, but it's not. It's kind of like a French press, but it's not. Mm. There's a bunch of different brewing uh, techniques for it, but there's a world championship for it. Wow. So um, I would love to do it. They change the country every year. COVID mm -hmm. kind of threw a curveball in it, but um, I think once I kind of get in my slow season and can mm -hmm. kind of stabilize it, I'd love to go compete in that, even if I just watch it. I yeah. think it'd be fun. Um, and then also I want to visit a coffee country where I get my beans from. So That's amazing. So um, a question for the audience, I'm sure they're going to ask this. What is your favorite coffee? Like, how do you, what is your favorite brew? Everyone asks me that. And you know, it's funny because <laughs> it, it really is mood dependent. In fact, the way that I brew my coffee is mood dependent based on what I'm looking for. Um, but uh, the Ethiopia Yurga Chef, that is probably my personal favorite out mm -hmm. of the ones that I have. Um, it has, I like lighter roast and that's, mm -hmm. Typically, people that are more into specialty coffee are going to be more likely to want lighter roast, but I roast this light. I roast it pretty light, actually, um, and it just has natural notes of like blueberry, lemon, milk, chocolate. It's just such a good coffee, um, and you get a lot of more of those fruity notes, and as you take it closer to a medium roast, more of that milk chocolatiness comes out of it. Yeah. Um, one of my personal favorites, my biggest seller is the Guatemala, which I have in this bin here. So... In case you weren't wondering, or in case you were wondering, the burlap bags you saw in the hallway is what these green beans come in, and this is what it looks like before we start uh, roasting with it. Wow, that's really cool. Um, but the Guatemala in my hand here, this is my most popular coffee. Yeah. Um, just like I said yesterday, I did about 280 pounds. Um, this one alone I did about 70 pounds of, so. Wow. Um, and then this is also involved in many different blends that I have. Um, but yeah, so. That's really cool. The, the crowd favorite, my mm -hmm. personal favorite um and yeah i enjoy them all though frankly yeah. i don't like dark roast as much but mm -hmm. um i do like my dark roast i like other people's dark roast i don't really you know if someone has good coffee i like it yeah um even so i started to appreciate um if people don't have good coffee i started to appreciate the the community and the atmosphere behind everything so that's really um, cool you know i can still enjoy drinking coffee even if it's not specifically what i like yeah um but yeah that's really cool man so Another big question, you're still in the army mm -hmm. right now, and you're also running this business. I'm sure the audience is going to wonder, how are you doing both of those? <laughs> well, the fun part is also too. So I was actually, I got here a little bit later this morning. I also uh, volunteer with Anvil Cleona Fire Department. Oh, wow. Um, and I'm a captain. So um, this morning I was already kind of running late to get into work. And then a, a ma an accident came in an Anvil and um, we have an app where you can see who's responding and nobody was responding. So... That would mean nobody shows up. Well, Ooh. they would dispatch another fire company, but yeah. we avoid that. We try to avoid that. It's our own call. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I ran a call this morning and throwing that into the mix. Mm -hmm. How do I do it? Some days I don't know. Um, <laughs> it does get challenging for sure. Like this upcoming weekend's my drill weekend. Mm. Uh, my unit is amazing. Um, frankly, they're part of the reason I can stay in the army and do my business because Good. Good. we're only out of Fort Indian Town Gap, which is mm. 12 minutes from here. Oh, wow. That's great. Um, super close um because i live close i don't have to stay in the barracks so mm. when we have annual training in june i do my business full-time but i have to be there full-time mm. and i am the one that does the roasting the packaging the distributing um, so in addition to training my staff to help me with packaging um, pretty much whenever i get done with uh, when we're released for the day i'll come here wow. i'll roast until i'm done 
probably be up really late and mm -hmm. then report in the morning and just one of those things you have to do but they're very good with if i need to get off drill like on saturday i don't have to go in um because i have the first day of the palmyra market so yeah you're doing drill you're you're a firefighter you're <laughs> yeah. do you have time for yourself um no and that's uh you know honestly um not to get too deep into that but i honestly don't want time for myself i i, mm -hmm. I have when you're a business owner it's like there's a a million things you can do and there's kind of two types of businesses you can build one and maintain it or you can mm -hmm. build one and grow it yeah um, and in my case i'm trying to grow it so mm -hmm. if i take a complete day off for myself and i sit at home yeah and i think about it i cannot just sit there i'm like i gotta do this i could be doing this <laughs> i just have a hard time relaxing yeah. um, so keeping busy is kind of better for me mm -hmm. um i don't know yeah it's and this is my <laughs> hobby truthfully this is my first real hobby and yeah really making time and that's where mm -hmm. i may be at work on a sunday but yeah. what i may be doing is trying six different recipes for iced coffee because mm -hmm. it's not as good as i want it to be mm -hmm. and that's what i've been doing the last few days in the yeah. morning when i come in trying something different and uh, but yeah so i really think we share that in the perfectionism yeah aspect i i do the same thing when i'm editing or anything like that i i just i just I can't. I, I just I have to keep working on it and keep working. I just stays mm -hmm. in my mind and like you know like oh, yeah. I need to fix that. I need to fix that. So I get it. Yeah, and that's <laughs> where uh, other people don't get it too because like mm -hmm. the iced coffee I brewed yesterday, my barista tried and she's like, "This is really good." I'm like, "No, it's not." I'm like, "See, it could be better." <laughs> I was like, "I feel like it's slightly under extracted and I need to grind finer yeah. or steep it longer or do mm -hmm. I change the water temperature?" Yeah, and that's where like brewing coffee and just and then being the roaster too. Like mm -hmm. if I bought a bag of beans and I feel like I could dial it in better. Yeah, you only have to think about the brewing part. Yeah. I'm the roaster now, so I'm like, should I have roasted this coffee differently? Mm -hmm. Is there ways I could do this? It just yeah a billion things in my mind that i know how to fix it and i'm not okay with settling so mm -hmm. yeah so no so i don't uh, i don't I, I enjoy relaxing but that's pretty limited yeah um i can only do it for so long but <laughs> really if i did have to pick something to de-stress it's hiking hiking okay. i like hiking so nice yeah i, I like going too that's great the appalachian trail fortunately swatera state park's really close nice um and kind of you know dillsburg and it runs up and stuff so that's cool that's really cool so um, you're one of the vendors for VetFest. Mm -hmm. um, VetFest is coming up in September. Um, why did you choose to be a part of VetFest? Uh, so honestly, with um, as much as, so with my business, I took a very community approach at first. Mm -hmm. The original uh, the spoiler is that like, when I first started this business, I was gonna go with the name Golden Hour Coffee Roasters. Mm. And I changed it to Cleona Coffee Roasters, where I, where I live, because I wanted a local approach. And I love that. And I love being tied into the community. Mm -hmm. No one has to guess where I'm at. I am in Cleona, and this is how I'm serving yeah. um, the people around me. However, being a veteran and also wanting to serve in that aspect mm -hmm. and kind of use that and target a different audience, um, veteran festivals are kind of something that... I'm trying to do more. And mm -hmm. the trailer you see in the parking lot, um, that was co-sponsored by EGA Associates, which mm -hmm. is a veteran-owned healthcare consulting company. And oh, okay. They do pretty much nothing but staffing for, they do more than that, but they do staffing for the VA hospital system. Mm -hmm. And with that, they pr uh, primarily serve veterans. I'm trying to target the veteran community as well. Um, so I think VetFest is a perfect opportunity for my trailer uh, mm -hmm. per, and for my business, for EGA Associates to kind of help get our name out. Um, and really it's it's um, one of those things I love giving back and I love um, just being able to use my business and make people happy, yeah. you know, get people into coffee, kind of share some of my passion with them. Yeah. And ultimately there's much larger core issues than people having bad coffee, such as, right. you know, veterans not getting the benefits that they need, right. things like that. Um, and that's, that's really where I'd like to see my business start shifting towards, um, mm -hmm. probably a nonprofit at some point, mm -hmm. um, or, uh, maybe shifting this business into one. I'm not really sure yet. Um, but there's a lot of ways I want to use my business to kind of help the veteran community mm -hmm. and vet fest, I feel like is a good way of reaching out and finding those people, mm -hmm. um, that, you know, could use our services and, you know, would enjoy something from our business. Yeah. So. Well, I, I love the fact that you just dove in, even though it was a reluctant, uh, mm -hmm. mission moving forward. You didn't want to be in the business, but the business wanted you. So you mm -hmm. absorbed that and you, you've taken it on now. And that's amazing from any perspective, um, especially, uh, veterans, anyone that's in service right now, what am I going to do when I get out? 
here's a great example of great human being doing great work, doing something that you love. It's a passion for you, coffee. Mm -hmm. um, but you've also turned it into a business. Right. Yeah. And, and you're keeping busy and everything like that, too, which is awesome. Um, thank you so much for hey, giving us this tour, telling us about everything. And uh, we're definitely looking forward for you being at uh, VetFest. Yeah, of course. I'm glad to be yeah. here. And I appreciate you coming in. Definitely. Thank you so much. Hey, you're welcome. On behalf of Greencastle, your nation's premier strategy execution firm, I'm your host, Al Green, and we'll see you in the next episode.